myself a windscreen. Just open it up. Sometimes this is latched shut. Open that up. That attaches to the bottle. And then the legs can twist out like so. Sometimes they're a little loose, but when you get it on the ground, it sits pretty stable. Figure out a spot, like when you're cooking. This is great, like on this slick rock. Um, there's no debris or like duff around that can burn around it. It's not uncommon to have little flare ups with these, and I'll show you how that happens. So, being clear, like I oftentimes will not, I'll light the stove sitting cross legged, but just in general, like camp kitchen safety is kind of crucial. Uh, a lot of accidents in the backcountry happen in the kitchen. Like boiling water, like a teetering pot falling in your lap, things like that. So be aware, but also these flare ups with stoves like Whisper Lights can happen, but there's, they're easily avoided. So first off, what I'll usually do is just pop the cap off. These won't be full to the brim. Like if you ever buy one of these stoves, there's a maximum fill line right here. And it just ensures if it's up here, it's not gonna get much pressure when you pump it up. So you take the pump and the valve, make sure it's seated correctly and threads correctly. And there's a little O-ring there. Those can get old, you know, just make sure it's not leaking out of the bottle. One note on the taking off of the lid, if you get any of the new ones now, they're going to have the same Like the child-proof ones? Yeah. yeah. So it's just and a matter of like <coughs> pushing, yeah. pushing down and turning. Yeah. Um, and then, like I was lazy with this and just put on the slick rock, that's fine. But if you're in the dirt and everything, just throw that lid back in the bag so it doesn't get covered in dirt and dirt will get on here. Basically sand and dirt um, with any stove is like not a stove's friend. That's how things get clogged up. Mm -hmm. And luckily for us, these stoves are really easy to field maintain. So if you have any issues with your whisper light, um, there's this brand new one that's mine. There's two other ones that are mine as well. They're on the older side. Um, last I checked, they, they work just fine. If you have any problems, that's actually a good like learning moment like we can take it apart and do some field maintaining it's really easy really satisfying <laughs> um, which is what i love about uh the stove like those isobutane stoves like if one you know goes on the fritz like what do you do sure. yeah you, you just go eat. for a backup <laughs> stove yeah. so the other positive thing about white gas versus those isobutane at elevation or if it's really cold like that pressurized gas is not that effective and you might even know, it doesn't take that much of cold weather. Like as soon as that thing starts depressurizing, you notice how cold it gets. Like it'll start depressurizing just on its own, like as it gets colder. So whisper lights are um, very versatile. A lot of these, like this one, will take isobutane if you change out the valve and the jet that's in there. It'll take isobutane, white gas, kerosene, gasoline, aviation fuel. So depending if you're traveling, you can find lots of different fuel types. Wow. Yeah, pretty cool. And you have that little kit that you can swap all that stuff out. Yeah, you can change out the jets and everything. And yeah. And, and you do the same thing, you would fill any you would put that that, that liquid gas into Sorry, the liquid into uh, fuel into, into there and then, put, and then pressurize it? Yeah. Okay. It's not going to burn clean or anything. Like white gas is definitely preferable. Put, a, um, put it in a pinch. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, I mean, this stove operates as it's configured, just like this one. So I've twisted this on, not super tight. And of course, just make sure this valve is closed, righty tighty. And then these are full, so it's not going to take a whole lot of pressure, but. Make sure you feel some resistance. You can kind of hear that little squeak. That's like, you know, there's a little gasket in there and that can get worn out. If it's, there, there's no resistance, you're not getting any pressure in there, but good resistance there. See, this is why I say like lighting these stoves is, is like an art. 
um, they all have their personalities. So I'll just pump like 20 times. The fuller they are, the quicker they'll like depressurize. So don't be surprised if you turn it on, you're cooking and you notice the flame starts dying, that you'll have to like, even on the ground, just pump it up some more, get some more pressure in there. Next, take this little swinging arm, kind of twist that in there, make sure it's seated completely and this will flip over and latch right there. And it won't latch if it's not seated all the way down there. Again, there's an O-ring that keeps that seal. So once I turn it on, if I see gas spilling out of here, abort, don't light it, because um, you, you'll have white gas spilled around. Luckily, white gas just evaporates really quickly. So I'm not gonna put the windscreen on so you all can see, but essentially, this is a new windscreen, way too shiny. <laughs> and these, you know, you can fold over itself like so, so it stays put. And then normally it always seems like you want to put like that little opening over the cable, but actually this little opening there helps you like grip the pot mm -hmm. so it doesn't interfere with the handle. So that's the windscreen. Some of them have like a little screen that like a skirt that fits around here, but uh, normally I just use this windscreen. So we have it pumped up. This is closed, lighter ready. And let me just like backtrack a little bit. Um, it's really fun to like get into the process of lighting the stove, but if you don't have like a pot of water ready to throw on there, um, you're kind of just wasting gas. Like I see it a lot, like you light it, and it just sits there going and then you get up, people get up and they're starting to like fiddle with dromedaries and everything. So make sure you have like pot of water ready to go or a pan with sliced veggies. And so what I'm gonna do, this is pressurized. Listen carefully. Hear that? As soon as I hear that, <clears throat> I'll turn it off because that's the gas starting to move through this tube and into this cup right here. Um, and so what it's doing is that that's just coming out as liquid gas, but once I light that cup and prime it, it heats this up. In turn, the liquid gas turn well, the liquid turns into gas within that because that cable is like heated up. So right now, I mean, now is like a good time, you know, get your pot of water, let that prime. I might throw this on there so I know it's gonna light. If I keep that on, like you, you heard that gas come through. And so that sound is the gas. So now you can see the top is lighting because it's turning to gas. But it's not ready for me to turn on. And that's how flare ups happen. This is kind of when it's like half heated, not quite liquid, not quite gas. If I crank it on now, it's gonna be a big orange flame. Um, it sounds scarier than it is, but if all else fails, just like turn the gas off, let it cool down. So you can see a small flame in there. So now I might turn it on. The flame kind of went out and it's not catching in the top, but I can hear it coming out. So now we have a good, clean, blue flame, and we can cook on it. Um, How soon after you, if it goes out, can you still light it? Or, like, um, you want to do it pretty quickly. Is it like 10 seconds yeah. in, or it's not uh, good? It depends on how cold it is outside, yeah. but you definitely, if it goes out and you know it's heated, just go ahead and turn it on a little bit, and you can even turn it back off, like turn it on and off, and a little bit of gas will come out, and you can see kind of what state it's in. But if you just keep it open and light it, um, that's when things can get big. And like the more of that orange flame that burns. So if I was to keep this open before it's like heated and, and allow too much gas to like enter that cup and I light it, you have to wait for a bunch to burn off and that, um, that orange flame burns really dirty and all that carbon and soot just fills up in there and that's also another thing that'll clog up that jet um, and it won't be operational. 
So if I turn it on now, it's kind of sputtering, but still pretty hot. And so you're cooking, cooking, cooking. You shut it off. You can let it just go off naturally. Some people like to blow the flame out and just let the gas push all that um, soot out or whatever like might be in the jet in the bottom. Um, the cool thing about these as well, there's nothing in life that like works better when you bang it upside down or shake it around vigorously. You know, like you try it and you just break it more. These are designed with a shaker jet. So there's a little needle that is designed to like go up and down. So down, it's just sitting on the bottom and the jet is open. The jet is just a little hole right in there. But if you do this, you're actually like, that needle is going in and out of the jet to push debris cool. out of it. It's like the simplest and like most effective <clears> thing. <throat> so if you're not getting a good flame um, and it seems like it's clogged, you can try with it on or off, preferably off, um, or with the gas off, and shake it upside down. Put the needle and seat valve in the carburetor. Yeah, yeah, thing. yeah, it's the most, like, easiest thing. And then you can just take it apart and like futz around with it to maintain it. So that's pretty much it. Um, the finer points of the Whisper Light. Like I said, if you start losing pressure because you're losing a little bit of gas in here, especially like tonight where they're pretty full, <clears throat> without like messing with it too much, just hold the bottle against the ground and you can get some pressure like that without messing with that or like worrying that um, you're gonna get gas everywhere. Maybe take the pot off so you don't knock it off the stove, but that's pretty much it. There should be lighters in your bags as well, but if you don't have one, um, I have a, like some spares here I can dish out. Awesome. Cool. Okay. And is this fuel cheaper than the isobutane little? It is, yeah. yeah. Because cheaper. which is and, yeah. it, and it doesn't waste as much of the. Yeah, you'll go right. through quite a bit of it, but. But I mean, yeah, you're not what, throwing away the whole can. Exactly. Like, right. Yeah, and there's like there's now like we were just talking about it. Like um, I was talking with Dan about this. Like there's a little, like valve, like double valve that you can stick two isobutane canisters together and like consolidate, oh, wow. which is pretty nice. So like gone are the days of having like, like is this one kind of full? I guess oh, we, yeah. I need to take five to ensure that yes. I have enough fuel as opposed to just one. But yeah, like this is really nice because it's cheap fuel. You know exactly how much you have. Um, I would just say like be cautious how much fuel you're using to prime it how much you're letting the stove run with that orange flame um, or with no pot on it. We still want to like try and conserve, mm -hmm. but it's pretty fuel efficient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then how much is it to fill up like that whole bottle with fuel? About well, like a gallon of that white gas is like 20 bucks. Oh, so you'll just buy a jug bucks. of that. Yeah. <clears throat> you buy that at the hardware store? Yeah, and you have the hardware stores yeah. too. Walmart, damn. Oh, yeah, yeah. And home anyway. and fuel is what it is. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I got some at the gearheads in town. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Cool. Super pretty cheap. much any gas station between you know, west of the Rockies, you can pretty yeah. much get white gas. Yeah, exactly. I never even heard. It's yeah. great to spend five. Mm. Mm. Oh, is that what these for? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've got my staff. Yeah. Nice. Why is it? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it out of here, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.